free buddy diagram. A box on a ramp. We have two goals today. First we'll just go over the free buddy diagram for a specific example of a box on a ramp. And then we'll use that free body diagram to help us apply Newton's second law and find out something interesting about how to calculate the coefficient of static friction. So first, we've got a box on a ramp and the angle of the ramp is such that the block is just about to slide. If we went one little bit further up an angle, the box would slide. So we know the box at rest but we're using the maximum possible force of static friction here. So, let's think about the different forces that are acting on the block. So what is the box interacting with? Well, it's interacting with the Earth via the force of gravity, so we'll draw a downward mg force. And there's also contact between the ramp and the box, and we'll separate that contact force into its two components. The normal force perpendicular to the ramp, perpendicular to the contact interface, and the static friction force, which happens to be the maximum possible static friction force in this case, which is directed up the ramp, because without that, the box would slide down. Okay, so let's choose a good coordinate system. Turns out that any coordinate system would, would do, but some coordinate systems are easier to use than others, and a good one in this case is one that is aligned with the slope. This is often useful for boxes on ramps, the, this particular coordinate system. But it's convenient in this particular case because two of our three forces are aligned with the coordinate axes. So, which force or forces do, do we have to split into components? Well, it turns out that only the force of gravity because the other two were already parallel to the x direction for the static friction force, negative x, and the y direction for the normal force. So the mg will split into components. Okay, so we have this angle theta at the bottom of the ramp. We'll draw a right angle triangle. One side of the right angle triangle is parallel to the y-axis, the other side is parallel to the x-axis, and mg is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. The full force is always on the hypotenuse. This angle theta shows up somewhere in that right angle triangle. Where is it? Well, this angle here between the ramp and mg is 90 minus theta, and it's 90 degrees between the ramp itself and the y component of the triangle. So if this part is 90 minus theta, that means this part in here between mg and the y component is theta. Okay, so now we use sine and cosine to get the y component is mg cosine theta, it's adjacent to the angle, the side directly across from the, from the uh, angle, the opposite side goes with mg sine theta. Okay, so what we really have done is replaced mg by two components, mg sine theta which acts down the slope, mg cosine theta which acts into the slope. So the full free body diagram shows balanced forces in all directions here, both directions. Okay, so we're going to apply Newton's second law twice, once for the x direction and once for the y direction. And the x direction, we can write down sum of all the forces in the x direction equals mass of the object times the acceleration of the object in the x direction. Similar thing for the y direction. Okay, so those are generally true statements, sum of all the forces equals ma. Now, we go back and say, well, what's our specific situation? It's this one here shown in the free body diagram. So, if we apply that to the x direction, we say there's only two forces in the x direction. We'll put those in with the appropriate signs. There's two forces in the y direction. We'll put those in with the appropriate signs. And the free body diagram, again, really is helpful when it comes to this process. Okay, so let's see how it works. So the Newton's second law equation says, add up all the forces vectors in the x direction. So down is positive, down the slope, so we've got mg sine theta with a plus sign, fs, and it's fs max, remember, because we're at the limiting angle here, so minus fs max is zero. And we can even say that fs max is mu s times the normal force. So mg sine theta is mu s times the normal. 
What about the y direction? Well, the y direction, we also have net acceleration of zero. So we have plus Fn, that's in the plus y direction, minus mg cosine theta equals zero. So this tells us what the normal force is, it's mg cosine theta. Now what we're going to do is put our equations together. So the left shows what we got from the x direction, the right shows what we have from the y direction. Note that Fn is in both of them, so we're going to replace the Fn in our x equation by mg cosine theta, our result from the y equation. So we end up with mg sine theta is mu s times the normal force, but the normal force is mg cosine theta. A neat thing happens here, okay, lots of cancellation. So it doesn't matter what the mass of the box is, the mass just cancels out. So you could do it for any mass box and it wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter what planet you're on, okay, you do this experiment on the moon, you get the same result, okay, the g's go away. Okay, so what we get is a nice simple equation, sine theta is mu s cos theta, so we can rearrange that. Mu s is sine over cosine, well that's just tangent. That's neat, mu s is tan theta, that's how you can measure the value of the coefficient of static friction. It's simply the tangent of the angle when the top object starts to slide over the bottom object. Okay, so that's kind of a neat result about the coefficient of static friction. Okay, so that's a nice look at how we use free body diagrams, drawing the free body diagrams, and the, what you do with a tilted coordinate system. And it reveals an interesting truth about the coefficient of static friction and how to measure it.